Dobson is here with us once again this week and Stephanie this week we're starting part one of a two-part series regarding scheduling for parents in two uh, that have two parent homes where there's kids involved and they're going back and forth and scheduling obviously is a difficult thing anyways but when you're dealing with parents who are separating or divorcing much bigger issue so let's start first of all with just the concept of a schedule uh, itself um, where do parents start when trying to get something like this lined up? There's two parts to any parenting schedule, and that's why I thought I would break it up into a two-part series. We seem to have way too much to talk about in a five or six minute period. So I broke it up between the regular schedule, which we'll call the school-based schedule if you have uh, kids that are school-aged children, and the holiday schedule. So that's usually for times when the kids are out of school so we'll be looking next week at that, holi that uh, holiday schedule. So when uh, considering a regular schedule, some families generally know what's going to work for them. For others, it's more difficult to come up with that schedule. So if families need some help, here's a few tips. Start by considering generally how the time will be broken up. So some families will do weekdays with one parent and weekends with the other. Some want to commit to, on a monthly basis, let's keep it about this many days for one parent and this many days for other, another, the other parent. Or others may want to generally have an exchange every few days. So these are just the general concepts to start. Then next, we want to consider the consistency that, that parents can create. The more consistency that you have between two homes um, and the more consistency for the parenting schedule, the better the children will be able to adapt, generally speaking. So maybe you want to have the exchange on a consistent day of each week or maybe around a consistent event like before supper on a particular day or after nap time on another day. So to layer on top of that, you may want to look at practical things like what's each parent's work schedule and what's the kid's schedule. So we've got school, life, activities, daycare, that sort of thing. I can I encourage parents to come up with a schedule they think might work for them and then to try it on for size. I suggest somewhere between the four to six week mark to at least give you a few exchanges and see how the children are adapting. It always takes time to get into that new routine. Finally, there's lots and lots of online resources. For my clients, I always send them to my website, hankadivorce.ca. I've got a resources section um, under divorce tools. There's three different parenting schedule creators or to help parents um, as they're building their plan to get some ideas of what might work for them. In my practice, I always take a developmental approach to uh, building parenting schedules uh, for parents when I'm working with them. And Stephanie, what exactly does that mean, a developmental approach? Well, a lot of times families will come in with their own ideas of um, how to create their schedule or what's been working for them or perhaps not working for them for a while. And I really start to inquire about what are they noticing with respect to their children and how well they're adapting to two homes. So when we look at a developmental approach, we look at things like the children's age, their stage of development, their temperament, their ability to adapt to changes, and any other particular considerations that would be child specific. One example is children with special needs. So in essence, this means that when creating that parenting schedule, parents should be mindful of their children's individual needs, and they may find that they need to make individualized schedules so that maybe if you have three kids, it's not that all three kids get lumped into a particular schedule. Maybe two children need to do this and one child needs to do that, for example. So Stephanie, obviously flexibility is key with this too. And in some cases there are going to be special changes, special requests. What's the best way to deal with that? Well, into every plan uh, that, that parents make, I always recommending, recommend negotiating some kind of a formula for how to deal with change requests. So there's various kinds of change requests and they should be dealt with differently. So there's, for example, there's times where a parent simply can't make their parenting, their scheduled parenting time work. You can implement something called a right of first refusal. That's a, a formula where if, 
if a, one parent isn't available, the obligation on that parent is to give the other parent, the off, we'll call them the off-duty parent, the first opportunity to care for the children while the on-duty parent is away. Um, but that opportunity is just that. It's an opportunity, not an obligation for that off-duty parent. There's also situations where a parent may want to exchange time because they've got a special occasion or a holiday coming up. Now, of course, we're going to be talking in more depth next week about holiday scheduling, but generally speaking, it's important for parents to provide what they want to see in the event that a parent needs to change. So how much notice do you need to give? Do you want to make sure that it's in writing? Is there certain information that you need about why that change request is being made in order for the other parent to consider it? And third, what if a major change is, is required? So for example, if there's life changes, so the children's school changes or their activities change, life changes, parents' work schedule changes, something that's going to be more major, you wanna always create some formula in there to make sure that you provide in the event of needing to make those major changes. In the end, it's always important to provide as much notice as possible to the other parent for any change requests so that they can um, look, so that you have a way to resolve uh, the dispute if a dispute does in fact arise. All right, Stephanie, well, great information once again. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back next week to talk about holiday scheduling for parents who are separated or divorced. Thanks, Stacey.